am Berg. Hello, my creative friends. It's been a little bit. Girl, Sarah Simpson, artist, illustrator person, is back with a another video. Um, I ended up taking the last month off to focus on prepping for um, my first craft fair, which is what this video is about, and also making some Halloween products, which is a video for another day. Um, but anyway, I thought I would fill in a page in my sketchbook and um, tell you about my experience doing my first craft fair. Um, I'll tell you how much it cost me, how much I made, and if it was worth it. So come along with me, let's talk about craft fairs. Okay guys, so we're trying a couple of new things today. This is kind of a different angle. And I'm going to try to draw and talk at the same time, which I think might be challenging, but let's just see how this goes. So, um, basically my first craft fair was at a place called the Vrooman Mansion, which is um, an old mansion that is in the city I live in, in Bloomington, Illinois. It's like a beautiful old house. And I'll show some footage of that. And um, it's also now a bread and back, bread and, bread and, ah, it's a bed and breakfast, you guys. It's a bed and breakfast. And um, it's really, it's a really cool place. And um, so they ended up having like, 23 different vendors there, I think, 20-ish artists. And my friend, um, whose name is also Sarah, actually told me about the event and invited me to um, have a booth there. And um, I'll show you a little clip of the earrings that this is what she makes, is like these um, beautiful engraved, um, laser engraved products. Um, I bought these earrings and a keychain and also, um, or they call coasters. So um, if you want to learn more about her stuff, she's on Instagram at um, the Pipe Dream Salon. Um, but anyway, whoop, it is really hard to draw and talk and think about what I'm trying to do. Let's see. So I told you about the place. So the event itself was um, three dollars to get in. And um, the reason that was is because the money goes would go towards um, restoring the beautiful stained glass windows that are in the place. And I really wish I would have taken more footage myself, but honestly, it being my first event, I was a little bit stressed out and um, just kind of focused on trying to get everything together. So I didn't record a lot, but I did record a little bit of footage of my um, booth. And I actually had a pretty decent space there, uh, much more than what I was expecting. So um, the cost for my booth was $40, which I thought was very reasonable. And the event had both indoor and outdoor space. So um, my booth was indoor, which I think made a lot of sense for my um, first event because um, I didn't want to mess with like trying to figure out a tent or even buying a tent. I didn't know if I'd want to do another event. This was kind of a test thing. And so I felt like $40 was something that if I, if it didn't work out and I didn't sell anything that I could afford to take that loss. And um, so it was kind of perfect for, um, perfect, perfect for a first craft fair in my opinion. And, um, so the event took place over two days from 11 to 5, so it was two six-hour days. And um, over the two days, I ended up making $414. And um, I would estimate that my supplies maybe cost me $30-ish, and that includes um, all the products that I still have left to sell that are left over. And so that brings my overall profit to like $344. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to talk about is was it worth it? And for me, it was. I made a little bit of a profit, which is great. I think there is more to benefit from, I got a lot of benefit from the fair that was more than just the profit. So the making the money was great, but um, there was other things that I think were really beneficial to having done that event. 
Um, so for one, um, I hate to say this word. I hate this. I actually hate this word because I am a not a social person. I am very comfortable in my little nest at home. I like to be sitting here creating. Um, I do socialize sometimes, but I find it can be really exhausting. So, um, but one of the benefits of this event was networking. Ooh, I know, I hate that word. It's like gross, right? Um, but <laughs> even though I find socializing really exhausting, it was actually really nice to be around like other artists and other people that can relate trying to live a fulfilling creative lifestyle where you get to make things and um, put them into the world and um, so that was really nice but also um, I ended up getting other opportunities from this so I had um, it increased the traffic on my website after the event for people that were looking for prints that they missed out on and um, I also had um, a couple of people that were interested in maybe licensing, licensing art for um, their projects. And so um, that was also a benefit. The other thing that I think was extremely helpful um, was that I got a little bit of a confidence boost. Um, so obviously there was people that saw my booth and just walked right by. Um, they weren't interested, but I also had a lot of people that like really stopped and they laughed at my silly pickle stickers and they really seemed to enjoy it. So it just kind of was a little reminder that not everyone's going to be interested in my art, but there is an audience for it. And I think um, that's true for most artists, you know, there's, it's just a matter of finding your audience that connects with the things that you like to make and the style that you like to make things in. Um, and also, um, it gave me a lot of feedback as far as just, it answered a lot of questions because sometimes when you're just creating things online, um, it kind of feels like screaming into a void. So like if you post something and maybe it's just the wrong time of day or it's like Instagram and, uh, you should have made a video because no one sees pictures anymore or <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, but, um, so you can often, like my default is to go, oh, well the art must not be good enough and that's why no one saw it or no, I didn't give very much feedback on it. But I got a lot of feedback um, by just being like a fly on the wall and because I kind of sat in the corner and I could watch people um, react to my stuff and see what people were like most drawn to consistently and um, it kind of made me feel like I need I could I should le lean into making my more punny silly pun kind of stuff because people really seem to um, enjoy that stuff and then um, I've also been thinking about making greeting cards and a lot of people seem to be interested in greeting cards. They asked about them, so it also helped answer just those kind of questions that you can't really answer by just sitting in your studio by yourself. So it was really great to get um, feedback from other people. For me, it felt like an, a success because uh, um, I made a little bit of money, I got a little information, I got a little bit of a confidence boost. Um, but also, um, I wanted to analyze why I thought this particular event was a good one for me. So, um, for one, there was a small number of artists there. And I think that's really, it was really good for my first event. Um, so yes, a smaller number of artist might also mean um, less people coming through uh, or less people that attend to attend the event I guess less of a draw um, but I also think that gave me an opportunity to stand out because I was pretty much the only one there that was making like children's style or kind of like this silly style of art and um, 
because it was like an interesting assortment, there was people that made jewelry and there was like a booth of like oils and like witchy stuff and smudge sticks and there was like um, ceramics. And so it was like a, just an interesting array, um, a really cool mixture of artists and creators. And um, because each of us was different, I feel like um, we weren't competing directly against each other, if that makes sense. Like if you go to a comic con or something like that, like you're going to like, there's probably going to be tons of people that have Spider-Man art, right? But like um, one of my best sellers was this little Spider-Man print, and um, it's probably because no one else there had any sort of like fan art or Spider-Man art or anything like that. So um, I think that helped me stand out. And then another reason why um, I think it was a good event for me was just because it was a low cost and um, it was a pretty easy setup. Like I didn't have to um, do like set up like a tent and all that. Like I basically just used furniture that I had in my house. I didn't want to spend a lot of money. I, I didn't know if like how this event would be or if I would walk away selling nothing. So, um, so cons and considerations. Um, so of course there's always the chance that you might not sell any art there and um, that you, that it might actually hurt your confidence a little bit, which is something I was very worried about. And so I definitely went into this with low expectations. Um, but if that is the case, if you do an art fair and that is the case, please don't let that discourage you because it doesn't mean that your art isn't good enough or there aren't people that want your art. It really just means that um, you, your audience wasn't there. For instance, like after the first day of the art show, like I thought, like I guess sticker sheets don't sell at art shows, like because everyone bought the big die cut waterproof stickers. But the second day, um, I sold a lot of sticker sheets. So it just shows that like each day had its own audience and that like I just didn't connect with people that <laughs> liked sticker sheets on the first day or they weren't, you know, they didn't attend or whatever. So it was sticker sheet Sunday. <laughs> and so I'm glad I, ha I had that two days there to kind of recognize that like it just depends, you never know. And a lot of the other artists there were telling me like, just bring everything because you just don't know. Every show and event is different and you never know who's gonna show up and what they like or what's gonna be popular. So um, that's good. Um, another, I would say, con of doing art shows for me was just, it's a lot of peopling and it's, a, it's which I find exhausting. But also it just kind of feels like a long day. I definitely like by four o'clock, I was like ready to be done. Um, you know, like there's only so much sitting and honestly, because it was an old house, it was very warm and um, I'm getting my watercolors moistened over here. So yeah, it was, um, it was just kind of a long day. And, um, but I'm, I'm still, feel like it was a good experience and I want to do it again um, and I'm already looking into doing my next art. sorry I can't think and look for things at the same time <laughs> I'm not good at this a little sip of coffee there um, all right let's get some paint on here and talk about um, suggestions so if you're thinking about your first art event, I would say um, be kind of strategic about your first one. I say start small, start local. So I also think it's good to keep in mind like um, the people that are gonna show at the event so you kind of know what um, kind of stuff will sell. For instance, like if you're going to sign up for a comic con then you probably want to make like superhero art because that's what people are there for um, at this event I really wasn't sure and um, I kind of had a feeling that it was people that are gonna appreciate this old house right because it's kind of like part of the point was like checking out this old house um, 
So I kind of focus on some of my more um, mature watercolors, like I put some of those out and um, my instincts was right on that, like my um, girl walking in a field um, did quite well, a lot of people, I sold out of those actually. Um, I, I, I printed six like I did I just did like a small amount of all the prints because I usually do print to order and I didn't know um, what people were gonna like so um, and then um, I did include some superheroes and I didn't think those would sell but those actually did okay too and I think that was just because there wasn't really anyone else that was offering that kind of like fan art stuff and People like that because um, they can connect to it and collect it and so it's fun to do a little bit of that. Okay, so my next suggestion is to go into this with um, the mindset of not selling but, uh, I hate to say it again, networking. <laughs> or you know what, let's not say networking. Let's just say go to it in, with the mindset of like, um, connecting and meeting other artists and kind of connecting with people in your community because I think we oftentimes like focus on or like I have I focus more on like Instagram and wanting like this kind of na national like following and we ignore um, the opportunity to like cater to our local community like just go into it with the mindset of um, not of like being a learning experience. If it's your first time, it should be a learning experience. It should be like connecting to your local community. It gave me a lot of ideas for how I could be selling more locally. And um, I kind of mentioned this earlier, but everyone at the event told me that each day and each event is different. So it's always hard to tell what people like. Yeah, just remember, it's just about increasing of your, your odds of connecting to your customers. So if it doesn't go well, it doesn't mean that your audience, uh, or that you're, there's something wrong with your art. It just means your audience wasn't there. That's it, you know? So um, just keep that in mind. So um, yeah, I think that's basically the gist of it. I um, had a hard time getting very much uh, art done well trying to talk and um, tell you about my experience but um, this is another learning experience we're all about learning experiences so um, I guess I might just like add, add, add a little speed paint here at the end so you can kind of see this little finished page here because I feel like it would be really unsatisfying to leave you without finishing this showing how this ends up. So um, we'll do that. <laughs> we'll do a little speed paint section and then I'll catch you on the other side. <laughs> I guess I could tell you about what I'm doing here. So um, basically I like to um, kind of, I like to do wet on dry mostly. I'm new to watercolors actually. I um, was gifted a bunch of watercolors from my neighbor. It's a fun story. I should actually do um, a video about it. But, um, so I've made a lot of really ugly watercolor paintings, but I'm starting to get into it. And I find that I like best um, trying to do wet on dry in like one wash. So like setting down the colors next to each other and letting them kind of blend. And I just think it, you get like kind of a pretty result. Like I'm, I'm definitely <laughs> don't know that much about watercolor. I, I'm still learning it, but um, it's it's just really fun and satisfying. I, just, I really like the way um, watercolor feels. Just the feeling of mixing of the paint with the water and there's just a, something really fun about watercolor. And you can control it, sort of, but you just have to work with it, you know? And so, um, maybe I can show you. Basically, I'm putting down a little bit of yellow, and I follow that with orange, and then I follow it with this um, 
magenta color mixed with a little bit of orange. get these little oranges done so um let me add just some gonna let me move this so you can see so now i'm going to um mix in like kind of mix up a little bit of green over here keep these paper towels for a long time like you can reuse them until they're like pretty saturated with paint <laughs> and then it's time for a new one because you'll start making your painting dirty but yeah okay so let's get some blue because I like to mix in a little bit of blue with the leaves okay let's try this so we're gonna do yellow first over here. Okay, so we're going to start with a little bit of yellow. Put the blues. I think it looks pretty if you kind of do one size, side lighter, one side a little darker, you know. artist and I can't think of his name it's like I don't even want to guess it starts with like a Y or something I'll put his name up here but um, if you're interested in learning about watercolors I find uh, it's Lyron Lyron Yakinski I think anyway yeah um, if you're interested in learning about watercolors like I find his videos really helpful um, I also um, really like these courses on schoolism.com, but that you know that requires a subscription. I did it for a little while and then um, canceled it because the girl's on a budget, you know. This isn't really like watercolor paper, so I feel like. When you use real watercolor paper, um, the paint acts a little bit differently. Honestly, any like even between different kinds of watercolor paper, um, yeah, the paint, I feel like if you do use watercolor paper, you get some prettier textures and things when you paint um, that you don't like on this kind of paper that's not really meant for watercolors. But I don't think it looks too bad, you know what I mean? It's not the worst. bit of teal behind there because I think that'll be pretty. Oh yeah, I like this. Adding a little color back here, it really makes those oranges pop. You know what, 
let's add a little yellowy shade up here. So it's like the light, it's more up here. More. Oh, that might be a little too green. Oh, you know what I should have done is just watered it down to make it lighter. So you got a yellow. See, we're learning. That's what sketchbooks are for. Alright, let's just add some, I'm going to dry this with, get my little um, hair dryer. I'm going to pause for that and then we're going to add some details and then it's done. Okay, so um, now I'm just going to add in some darker shadows. So I'm going to go back in with my um, kind of that magenta color, mix with a little bit of orange. I might add in a little bit of red here. Just add some um, shadows. Kind of give these guys a little more dimension. Feel quite right. I think I kind of messed up the shape on that. Might help to. Uh, have your reference photos in front of you for those shadows. That's okay. Looks a little more like a peach. All right. I'm just gonna add some little sparkles, highlights. Probably call this done. Let's see if I can soften that right there. So that's a little watercolor tip. You can um, soften hard edges. That helped me a lot. Realizing you, it's not ruined, you can actually soften and adjust things. Okay, let me get my white marker and add some highlights and sparkles. And then we'll call it done. So oh, that's what I managed to get done <laughs> in like 35-ish minutes while trying to talk. So, ta-da! As always, thank you so much for watching this video, for your support, your thumbs up, all those things. Um, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. It really helps me out. And if you want to see more, I'm also on Instagram and on TikTok at by Sarah Simpson. And if you want to support my, my stuff, um, my website is by Sarah And um, I will be adding new products to the store in August. Um, so actually next week, next weekend, um, Next Saturday, I'll, I'll put a date here. I'll look at a calendar and add a date. And um, I'm also planning a big Halloween launch in um, September. So stay tuned for that. If you're a Halloween person like me, I love Halloween. So um, until next time, keep on arting in the real world. Bye.